This is the KLSU Tiger TV Tailgate Show, the LSU Student Media Football Pregame Show, live from the LSU Student Union. Follow us live on Twitter at KLSU Sports and watch us live via LSUNow.com. Here's your host. And welcome in to another season of the KLSU Tailgate Show. That was the voice of former host Nick Hallaby. I feel like we need to have a moment of silence for Nick. It's so weird to not have him here. That is true. Here is the moment of silence. We'll go ahead and start that now. Okay, good. And we're back. <laughs> okay, I'm your host, Sean Larkin, joined once again this year by Courtney Brewer of Tiger TV. And joining us this year is Keith Fell from KLSU as well. How are you all doing today? A little sweaty. I go home to Kentucky every summer and forget just how hot it is, but I'm excited for there to be football. I'm excited to be back in Tucker Stadium. I'm ready to go. Keith, how about you? Likewise, I've just been uh, stoked for football season for months now, so ready to get the show on the road. Well, yep, we've made it through the dog days of summer. Uh, the last time we saw, other than the spring game, we saw the Tigers in action. We had defeated the defending national champion UCF Knights in the Fiesta Bowl. Um, so let's just go ahead and start with this LSU team. Um, Courtney, I'll start with you. Uh, what are some things to expect, Just not just tomorrow, but the whole season? So honestly, coming from this LSU team, I'm just expecting another season of improvement. You saw such a strong season last year, and it is going to be hard losing some of those stars we had, like Devin White like all of these big names that we had. And so I do think we're, there's going to be a little bit of an adjustment, but I think that's why I'm really glad we're opening with Georgia Southern as opposed to the last two years where we've opened against BYU, opened against Miami. And so I think it's really important for this game to be not necessarily a tune-up, but a practice that's against another team, if that yeah, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, we opened with Miami last year in a highly anticipated game. I mean, obviously we'll get into Georgia Southern in a little bit. Um, but, you know, coming in, we're the number six ranked team in the preseason polls. Um, eight returning starters on each side of the ball. Tons of other guys that saw playing time last year. There's a lot of reasons to be excited about this team. Obviously, the schedule's a little bit lighter in some ways as you're getting teams at home. Um, you're replacing Miami and Georgia with, say, Vanderbilt and Texas. Uh, there's just a lot of optimism around the program, and it starts, uh, it starts on offense, honestly. Uh, Keith, can you go ahead and talk about the offense a little bit? Uh, yeah, I'm just uh, looking forward to seeing uh, if all the hype around this uh, new Joe Brady scheme, uh, who's the new passing game coordinator and QB coach, if it's going to uh, come to light because there's been so much offseason hype about um, you know what new heights he can take to uh, this LSU offense. And um, so far, I mean, all I've heard is that um, – that it is definitely going to be a new look and uh, that we better watch out. And, uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to seeing uh, how uh, Terrace Marshall and uh, Jamar Chase, how they step up into their new uh, starting receiver roles and um, just how good this pass game can be uh, as compared to past years of LSU offense. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I follow, I'm a big Saints fan, so I know uh, Joe Brady, the impact he had on Sean Payton's offense and game planning on Sundays. So you bring that guy in and, you know, we've heard about this going on 10 years now, how every offseason, oh, the offense is going to be something you've never seen before. It's going to be new and improved. Um, the big difference, I think, is just going to be the way they're going to spread the ball around and get other guys involved. Um, last year, Justin Jefferson was targeted 91 times, and the second uh, highest targets was Stephon Sullivan with 43. They were the second largest difference between the number one and number two targets in the SEC last year behind your Kentucky Wildcats. Uh, just to put it in perspective, uh, Bama had plus 24 between their one and two, and Georgia was very good at spreading the ball around at plus six. Um, you know, getting the ball out faster, spreading it around. Also not using seven and eight man fronts to protect, you know, the quarterback. They're going to be able to go five and six man protection schemes and get guys out in space. Um, you're looking at Stephon Sullivan making the change to tight end. You know, that's a pass catching wide receiver that should be able to, you know, give you another dynamic. Clyde Edwards Alaire showed he could catch the ball out of the backfield. So, you know, we've seen it, we've heard about it. Just I'm you know, I don't know if we're gonna fully see it tomorrow, but I'm excited because everything I read about Joe Brady is he's got his staple on this offense. Yeah, I'm really excited about Joe Brady and have been since it was announced that he was coming to join the team. And you've seen in practice is really good chemistry between him and this offense. It's just so hard being an LSU fan. Every single offseason you hear, this is the year of the offense. Offense is going to be great this year. We're finally stepping up on offense. You have to wonder when it stops being all talk. And so I'm hoping that 
No, we won't necessarily see all of that this weekend against Georgia Southern, but I'm hoping that in these few games to come with Texas, with these SEC teams, we're going to see if it's not all talk this year. Yeah, I mean, the thing that, that a lot of people don't realize, you, know, you, hear, you hear people say, oh, they're saving it you know, for this or saving it for that. That's not how football works. You don't just run something you haven't ran against you know, live competition the first time against Florida on the road or Bama on the road. Like, you've got to work on these things and, and, you know, do them repetitively against other opponents and, you know, just kind of throw in some new wrinkles. You know, you don't just, like, throw the kitchen sink at somebody in week nine and be like, oh, they've unleashed the offense. Like, they're going to, you know, tomorrow you, you probably won't see everything they're going to do, but I look to see a lot of different formations, moving guys around. Like, uh, Justin Jefferson's going to be working out of the slot. You know, he was the leading receiver last year. They're going to move everybody around. All the wide receivers have been lining up at all the different positions. They've ran a lot of no huddle. So, you know, you'll see I just want to see some different formation changes. I don't necessarily need to see reverses and flea flickers and stuff like that. I just, you know, I just want to see something different and give different looks and don't run the same one and two wide receiver sets out there with one guy running a route, you know, and that's what we've seen the last few years most yeah. of the time. Yeah, give us something different to prove that there is actually a change and that we're not rolling with the same offense we have been for the last decade. Yeah, and this is also probably the first year in a while that we've come into a season very comfortable at the quarterback mm -hmm. position. Um, year two as a, as a starter under Joe Burrow, uh, what are you expecting Keith to see? Uh, honestly, I think he can move into – a top three quarterback in the in the conference. I agree. Behind uh, Tua and uh, Jake Fromm, honestly, I, I mean, I think myself as a lot as, as well as a lot of uh, LSU fans expect out of him this year to improve to that mark. Um, I think it'll be a fun year for him. Yeah, I mean, a lot of you know a lot of the things last year that really you know hindered him was just not getting here on time. Mm -hmm. You know, he got here a couple of weeks in and had to kind of win the trust of those guys and. You know, he finally got that, and he's obviously he's the leader of this offense. Um, you know, you've heard him all offseason talking about how we can, you know, score 40, 50, 60 points a game, which is kind of ridiculous. Let's just dial it back a little bit, but, you know, it's possible. <laughs> we can. The offense is returning a lot of guys with experience. Um, you know, so we'll see, you know, what happens. I think he does take the jump, and he could be a top three quarterback. And, and the SEC's got a lot of solid quarterback yeah, play. Yeah, I right definitely now. see him falling into that. At least, definitely top five, if not top three quarterback position. Because, I mean, you know from doing our show, doing this show last year, I was on the Joe Burrow train the entire 2018 season. And I still am because he's just got this experience. He has a year of SEC play under his belt with big wins and big road yep. games. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just excited to watch him keep improving, keep stepping up as this leader that you've seen him as, even last year. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, if, if it wasn't, a couple of the games earlier in the year that he showed his toughness. I think Georgia, the Georgia game, he showed his mm -hmm. toughness and swagger, you know, with that big upset win. And, I mean, the, the last game of the year in the Fiesta Bowl, you know, the guy was knocked out on the, on the interception, mm -hmm. you know, to come back from that and just post up solid numbers and, you know, the offense scored 40 points. Yeah, that just shows his toughness, and, you know, that's what you look for in your quarterback. You know, obviously tomorrow we don't want to see him, you know, take off scrambling and lowering his shoulder into guys because it's week <laughs> one Georgia Southern. You know, if he yeah, wants yeah. to do that next week, that's fine. Go, then go ahead. Yeah, yeah. but, you know, <laughs> let's just see. I, I'd like to see him go out, you know, and look crisp, uh, you know, not turn the ball over, and, you know, let's just get it done. Mm -hmm. uh, so, let's Keith, let's get into Georgia Southern. Uh, they come in from the Sun Belt. They won ten games last year. Uh, they won a bowl game. And uh, they're coming back, and then this team is a triple option team, but it's not like the triple option teams you've always seen. They run a lot of formations out of the pistol and the shotgun. They run a lot of alignments. I was watching some film earlier, and, and some of the formations they run is crazy. So uh, give us a little bit about Georgia, Georgia Southern. Uh, well, they're returning uh, arguably their best, their best player, which is uh, QB Shy Wirtz. Um, he decently with throwing the ball. He, he completed 6% of his passes for – Almost 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns last year. No picks. So a, a decent passer as far as triple option attacks go for quarterbacks. But um, he's mostly a runner. Uh, averaged 5 yards per carry for 981 yards and 15 scores. So he's definitely a, a dual threat guy. And uh, most mostly a runner, though. Um, and this offense is... is uh, Definitely true to its uh, its name with the triple option. It averaged 266 yards per game on the ground. Uh, the top receivers are back, um, but they did lose um, their two experienced running backs. But they do still bring back a, a respectable stable of um, another two that um, to look out for in uh, junior Wesley Kennedy and sophomore Logan Wright. 
Uh, they lost a lot of experience on the offensive line, which is one of the big question marks. Um, they do have a Georgia transfer, uh, left guard Jake Edwards, uh, Jake Edwards, who is um, one of their key players on the offense as well. And uh, on the defense, you have um, a very talented secondary, especially at the corner position. Uh, their two corners are Kendall Vildor and uh, Monquavian Brinson, who are both seniors, and they're the by far the two key players on the defense. Um, the pass rush from the defense line will it'll be okay. I mean that's an area they need to improve. Um, but another question mark is the safety position because they lost a lot of experience there as well. Looking to replace a lot of talent there as well. Yeah, and you and you were talking about the offensive line. I think they lost uh, the center was all conference. Mm -hmm. I think the left tackle might have been all conference as well. Yeah, and, they had a couple. And, and uh, the part with Georgia Southern, you know, in these triple option teams, you know, you don't see it a lot. And it's good. You were saying, you know, it's good to get a game like this as your first game. LSU has had a long time to prepare for the triple option mm -hmm. this year, uh, this offseason. And, you know, that's going to go a long way. What stood out to me, though, is um, Georgia Southern led the country in turnover differential last year at plus 22. You know, these triple option teams, they don't really turn the ball over a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Wirtz had no interceptions last year. Mm -hmm. He, you know, that's... Which you know that could be skewed because you know if you're not you're not behind a lot you're not throwing the ball and which is what you're hoping LSU does is to be able to contain the triple option offense put them behind because then you know the game gets out of hand because these type of offenses they don't really play well from behind as we've seen Georgia Tech you know the last few years and prior when you get down it's hard to really just just air it out so you know what are some keys uh, you're seeing for defensively for LSU to you know try to stop this triple option? Uh, well, I mean. I think it all comes down to uh, really how well can you contain Shy Works as a quarterback because he is what really makes the whole team go. Arguably, I mean, as the as the offense goes and the triple option goes, the defense goes. So, really, the whole team builds off of him alone. So you have to get a a good uh, run containment defense on the defensive line and uh, probably bring some some of the uh, middle linebacker inside linebackers up to. Um, just contain him words um, from you know going off too much as a runner. <laughs> yeah. So and with the with the triple option, it's it's assignment football first. Mm -hmm. And I was reading an article, and Caleb Von Chason said it's going to be boring for defensive ends because what it does it frustrates what you do well and what else you does well is attack. They're fast, and the defensive ends aren't going to be able to just go go go. You know they're going to have to play assignment football. Mm -hmm. And what they're also going to be able to do. They have arguably, well, there's no argument to it. Grant Delph is the best safety in the country. Mm -hmm. They're going to be able to move him and Jacoby Stevens down in the box and play run and, you know, just just be able to move them all around. It's just playing assignment football. Talk about Grant Delpit. You know, we lost Evan White, we lost Greedy Williams, but Grant Delpit's arguably the best defensive player in the country. Oh, what I, do you expect out of him? I completely agree. I think you're going to see Grant Delpit get a lot of national recognition and respect this year, and I think he's – gonna have to prove himself and step up and fill these shoes of these great big name almost household name players that we've lost and I think he has the ability and the potential to do that in the position that he's in to step up and get that national recognition. Yeah, he's, he's so versatile and Dave Aranda's talked about it you know they can do things with him and you know a couple other guys they're just so versatile uh, defensively. Um, so what are we looking forward to? The keys of the game tomorrow offensively. Courtney, I'll start with you. What are you looking to see offensively? I know we've talked about the new and improved offense, but like, what are some things you hope to get out of this game? I'm hoping to see change. I'm hoping to see after – I mean, I know I said this earlier, but when you grow up an LSU fan, you're always hearing, oh, the offense is going to be different this year. And so I'm hoping to see – some truth to that. I'm hoping to actually see if something change. I'm hoping that we're going to see the impact that Joe Brady has made, and I'm just hoping to continue to see Joe Burrow step up in that leadership position. Keith, what about you? No, I mean, like as Courtney said, I'm just hoping to finally see this offense take a step up to the next level um, and truly show it to be a, a true RPO offense, and uh, I, I mean, she said earlier also, I don't think we're going to see too many wrinkles because we got to save, I mean, a lot of these play calls for uh, the Texas game next weekend. But um, I'm just looking for, I mean, a little bit of change to let us LSU fans know that that change is definitely finally here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, according to Coach O, you know, he said we're coming out guns and blazing tomorrow, and I'm not even sure what that means, so we'll see, I guess. I'm not going to question so, it. Yeah. I